thank you for joining uh, this interview today. So this is the Recruitment Journeys interview series. We, we simply just trying to inspire student athletes, inspire athletes in Africa to take the education seriously and also the, the opportunities that education can open for you as a student athlete uh, and also as a sports person. So a lot of people have this norm where education is not really important if you're a sports person, whereas there's a lot of things that education can do for you as a sports person. So this is the main aim for the Recruitment Journeys interview series. And today we are very excited because for the first time we have the very first athlete that World Athletes Recruit sent to the United States, he went to Bethany, uh, which is in Tennessee, Mackenzie. I'll give him a chance to introduce himself. So, Tadi, we are glad to have you here. Uh, may you please tell us who Tadi Aminga is? Uh, glad to be here, Coach. Uh, correction, I went to Bethel. You said Bethany. Oh, yeah, it's Bethel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, as you all know, I'm Tadewa Nashe Minga. I am a junior in my junior year in college. I come from Kadoma, Zimbabwe, the, the, the smallest city in Zimbabwe. And I'm currently studying information systems and minoring in supply chain management. I'm a form, former student athletes, although I'm still in the process of play, getting eligible to play again. So that's to you. Okay. That, um, that's exciting. I'm really excited to have you here. How's been your stay in the USA? So when you say junior, a lot of people may not really understand what a junior is. A junior is basically a third year student in university in the United States. So how's been your stay in the United States? Uh, it's, it's had its ups and downs. But overall, I think it's been a very positive um, experience, and I genuinely love it. The side, and um, hopefully, we will have more athletes come through in the future. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting journey, um, considering where you came from. I think we're we gonna we're going we're going to touch on that. We're going to talk on your recruitment period. Uh, you coming from Chegu too on a daily basis to train and um, the zeal and dissemination that you showed for you to get there. So, yeah, one of the few student athletes that are currently now in the United States, uh, either studying or playing soccer. How is it being an international student? Uh, it has its ups and downs, just like everything else. Um, I think the positives that I would state are you're away from home, uh, you get to be independent, to be your own man, and uh, you experience life away from home. Uh, you meet lots of people and you've learned lots of things. The negatives are there are a lot of restrictions that come with being international students uh, with, with res uh, respect to work, uh, class hours, etc., etc., as well as immigration. That's a that's probably the first thing we should have said, because that's the biggest issue. Uh -huh. But other than that, I think it's it's been all right. I've enjoyed it. It's actually interesting. I see uh, Manungo now is saying that's my junior. I don't know who was who, who's the order between the two of you. <laughs> so uh, Manungo, Manungo, and I, he's, he's older than. Me. <laughs> okay, okay. So shout out to Manungo there. Thank you for joining us, Manungo. So. I think for most people, you hear crazy stories like when we had the interview with Kevin. Um, he spoke about him yeah. deciding to play soccer in the streets uh, of, of Maronde, having to to always get beaten by his mom. Um, how did uh, you start playing soccer, and what motivated you to to, to start playing soccer? Uh, so I started playing soccer. It's it's a bit of a weird story, but. At my old school, on Saturday nights, they would let us go out and play on the fields. And uh, I think it had been about my fourth week at that school, at Falcon College. And uh, I went out to play with some friends, playing some soccer on, uh, on the field. And the first team coach saw me playing and he was like, he called me over and he was like, uh, I want you to come and train with the first team. Mm -hmm. And so 
prior to that, I'd never played soccer like that. I'd only played with my friends or my dad at home. So that was my actual beginning when I started playing soccer. I uh, went from no soccer to first team soccer in the space of one weekend. So <laughs> that was really it. <laughs> okay, okay. So a lot of people know you as Tadio, the Cheese MVP, 2017 Cheese MVP, um, and as a soccer player who's currently in the United States. But then for you, when did you then say, I'm going to use soccer to fund my education? At what point did you realize that decision for yourself? Um, I think it was soon after I'd gotten my A-levels and uh, I had a decision whereby I could go to study law in Cape Town mm -hmm. uh, and just become a lawyer or just go on a journey far from, far, far from home, see what I can make from, of my life. And soccer, soccer is the opportunity. It was the only way I could afford to do that. So I decided, let me just take a journey into the unknown and I've, I've enjoyed it ever since then. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So a lot of people now, uh, when we talk to different people, they ask us, what are the benefits of a college scholarship? So I think this answer would best suit it if it's answered by a student athlete. Uh, what, what are the benefits of getting a college uh, scholarship in the United States? The benefits of getting a scholarship are your education is paid for, uh, depending on how much you get. Uh, you, you don't have big debt to pay off for, and you get a first class education when you come here. And uh, you can work almost anywhere after getting a, a, an education here for free. So it's not only is it education, but like you get a lot of experience doing different things, which um, if you stay at home uh, or just go to school, you can't really get that experience. So it's, it's very beneficial. I, I recommend lots of people to do it. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's why we said to name this the Recruitment Journey Series. Um, it's, it's, it's a journey, an exciting journey that takes you away from home that uh, that makes it very interesting for you as, as a person as well as you get to, to mingle with different people from different backgrounds. So I'm going that's to take you back to, to Falcon College, 2017. Uh, you were chosen as MVP of the Cheese, um, cheese Tournament. How was that? How was that experience for you as as a student at, at Falcon College? Uh, it was a, probably my best, best experience, best moment there. Um, I like I had said, I had never played soccer until a few years before, and um, for me to go from not playing soccer at all within three years to becoming the MVP of the national um, Chis National League was something I was actually very proud of and something I'll always be proud of. Uh, also, my teammates, like Prayer, who's just joined the chat, uh, it, it was a good moment for us because we came from being underdogs uh, yeah. as a whole team to being finalists and, in my case, being named the best player. So I will always cherish that moment, probably the best moment. Yeah, I think it was. It is a very um, interesting thing for you as well. Uh, I'm happy to to see Prayer Moyo. Um, he also joined, uh, so I think he got it after you got it as well. Uh, yes. Yeah. My successor. Yeah. Okay. So welcome, welcome, Prayer. Thanks for joining the interview. So after passing your 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 A levels uh, at Falcon College, and you're obviously making headlines on the soccer pitch. Yeah, I think it must have been a dilemma for you, as, as you rightly put it, that you, you would either have gone to do law in Cape Town or then, so what helped you decide to then say, you know what, I'm going to go to the United States to pursue my education? Um, well, the financial situation back home, I think that's ultimately one of the biggest factors because... Uh -huh. In my case, it was I'd go to law school, get a degree, come back home, and it's just it's the same cycle. But then this opportunity, just I was like, let me try something new. Like, I have nothing to lose, really. So that was probably the biggest decider, the 
the fact that I had something new to try, nothing to lose. Okay, that's interesting. So I remember seeing you as a big, as a big kid. You, mm -hmm. I, I remember the first time I saw you, I was like, okay, okay. Uh, I'm most likely going to work with this kid. How, how uh -huh. was it for you having someone come to you and then say, you know what, uh, I want to work with you? It was, it was very inspiring, honestly. Um, at that point, I didn't, I didn't think I could go much, much further. I, I thought I'd kind of reached my potential. Uh -huh. And when you came and said, I can work with you and we can get to ABC. And I found that very inspiring. I was like, sure, let's do it. So I, I really do appreciate that opportunity. It's, it really helps. We, we often, uh, we often get, sorry, I, I'm just going to, to be walking a bit. I'm just going to fix my lighting. So we often get people ask how Minga was recruited. And a lot of people don't usually believe the story that Minga was recruited without a video. It's... <laughs> yeah, no video. Yeah, a lot of people don't, don't believe that Minga was recruited without a video. It's, uh, it, it's something that's, that's rare, but then it's also something that, that mm. you uh, a thousand of miles away from home. What was your first, first, first impression when you got to the States? Well, what was your first impression? It is hotter than I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's hotter than I thought. Uh -huh. um, my first impression of, in terms of soccer, like the, my soccer team and league, was this is actually very professional. It's not a joke. People are here to work and I have to get my stuff in order in order to to play around to play here on this team. Yeah, I remember talking uh, with you and Jed uh, after your first Cooper's test. Uh, how was preseason? How was preseason? What was your first impression of preseason? And uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> preseason was preseason was hard. <laughs> uh -huh. Preseason was very hard, um, but I mean, coming from uh, World Athletes Recruits, uh, I think you guys had trained us very well. Jed and I were prepared when we got there, and we actually, were, I think, I was in my preseason test results were like top five, the whole squad. Uh -huh. uh, Jed was also up quite high with us, so whilst it was pretty challenging, I think. You guys had given us the, equipped us well to, to deal with the challenges. Okay. And then, so, how was that impression for you? Uh, a lot of people say they are amazed by the diversity that college soccer has in terms of the pool of talent where coaches recruit from, right? So, mm -hmm. how was that first impression for you, meeting different nationalities, meeting people from different nationalities for the first time, and then trying to be part of the team? Um, it was, it was interesting. Uh, a lot of the guys who, who, who came, we were all from like different sects. So you had the guys who spoke Spanish, they just stayed on their own. The Europeans kind of stayed on their own and then us Africans kind of stayed on our own. Uh -huh. But the preseason kind of forced you, forced everyone to, and soccer in general forces us to, to interact. And after some time, we realized that ah, these guys are actually pretty cool. Like, you know, we may not speak the same language properly, but we have we share a lot of things in common. And number one is soccer. So uh, made a lot of friends, and some friendships I made there, I think, will be lifelong friendships. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the joys of being in college. You get to make long-lasting relationships with people from different parts of the world. So I think in any career, that connection is actually very important. So, and then I think the main question would be, what surprised you? A lot of people talk about the physicality. What? A lot of people talk about um, how fast the football is in the United States. What was the main surprise for you? Yes. Uh, the physicality. <laughs> it 
Uh, it's a, uh, I, I, I did kind of expect it to be physical, uh-huh. but I, it was not as physical. It was more physical than I had expected. Okay. And uh, I think the climate also didn't help it being very, very humid like that. It kind of made things a bit more tough. Okay. And how was it being under Coach Jaju? He currently holds um, uh, the record for the most goals scored in a single season by a student in the NIA. How was it being under Coach Jaju? Mm. Uh, Coach was a father figure, a proper father figure. <laughs> he never shied away from rebuking you. If you made a mistake, he would make sure to let you know right there and then. And uh, you had to make sure you had to respect him. And so I think uh, Coach Jaju, uh, I think everyone who plays under him ends up respecting him and loving him as a man and as a coach. So I, I really do appreciate that opportunity. Uh, one of my best coaches in, of all time that I've been coached by. Okay. Uh, I think this is an interesting question. Who would you say is the most talented player that you've played with? The most talented player I've played with? Uh, it would either be Babu, Babu Ka. Um, he now plays for Atlanta Silverback. Or one of my, my old captains from my old school, uh, Kumbirai Karu. I think he's, prob- he's probably the best player, most skillful player I've ever played with. Okay. And Dominic Thierry, my ex-roommate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that, that's interesting. So what would you say are some of the lessons that you took away from from your experience at Bethel? You, 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 you have, you've currently changed schools, you've moved to a new school. Um, what would you say were the main or, or, or the sticking points that you picked? Uh, the main, you said the main lessons I learned yes. from the move? Yes. Uh, I think patience. Uh, don't rush things. When I first arrived, uh, I, I got there wanting to, to break into the varsity team immediately. Um, but now in hindsight, I look back and I, I realize that I should have been more patient with the process and um, should have understood um, how, how the process works. And you know, now I look back and I realize that patience is actually very important to everything that we do. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's very true as well. And then, uh, mm-hmm. when you look at playing in the NIA, uh, how demanding would you say the soccer is in the NIA? I think it's very, very demanding. Um, I think a lot of people here don't, don't realize how demanding the NAIA is because everyone thinks automatically of NCAA. Uh-huh. Um, but within NAIA, there's a lot more international students, I assume. I, I think that's uh-huh. cool. And there aren't as many age limits. So you play with a lot of people who vary in age and ability and nationality as well. So it's a very skillful league, very, very skillful league. And a lot of talented people from all over the world. Yeah, we we always talk about uh, about that when we mention the NIA. Due to the differences in rules in the NIA, uh, you get to get a little bit more competitiveness in terms of you. you at times the school will recruit a twenty-four year old. At times the school will, will recruit someone with uh, some academy background coming from Paris, uh, Paris Saint Germain Academy. I remember at Lille. Uh, the the year you went to the United States, they recruited from. Paris uh, and Saint Saint Germain reserve team, so there is a little bit more of that uh, competitiveness as well. So I'm, I'm taking away from from soccer a little bit, uh, and then touch off into some areas. Uh, I'm hoping you're gonna give me honest answers. Uh, I think we we are very much looking forward. We look forward to this section. So, <laughs> who's your role model? My role model in terms of life or in terms of soccer? 
But in general, you, you can mention, you can say in soccer, or but who is that person that you emulate? Um, uh, in 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 soccer, I would say definitely Steven Gerrard. Uh, I think he's the best captain of, uh, that I've seen in my lifetime, professional on and off the field. But in in life, I think my role model would have to be my dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys share a close bond. Where would you prefer to yeah. play, um, La Liga or English Premier League? English Premier League. Why? Any day. Any day. I think it's more competitive in that a team that is last on the, in the league can beat the team that's first in the league. Like with Liverpool and Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. uh, Aston Villa just survived relegation last season. This season they beat the, the champions 7-2. So you never know what's going to happen. It's pretty interesting, entertaining as well. Okay, that's true. Uh, taking you, uh, bringing you closer to home. I hope you, your knowledge of Zimbabwean soccer is good. Who would you say is most talented between the end of Mkamba and uh, Kama Billiard? I'd have to go for Kama. <laughs> you have to go for Kama. Why would you? Yeah, I, I know. Uh, the thing is, he's just more skillful, in my opinion, and I think a bit more technical. And I just, I just find him an entertaining footballer to watch. I also would, uh, I also would pick Kama. No, uh, it's, it's a pity he's never gone to Europe. He's never going to play in Europe. I think he's one of the best talents we've produced in Zimbabwe. Uh, taking you to, do, do you think? Sorry, do you think he'll go to Europe one day? Do you think he will go to Europe? I don't think so. Um, he's now twenty-nine, going to thirty. Um, unfortunately, I think the, that ship has sailed for him. But, but you never know. Yeah, so you never know. But then um, at 30, I think it's a little bit too late for him. Uh, yeah. What would you choose between Mbappe and Haaland? I would have to go for Mbappe. Only because I've never really watched Haaland that well. And what I've seen Mbappe doing is ridiculous. So I'd, I'd have to go for Mbappe. <laughs> okay. Um, and then... Uh, and he has a World Cup. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> I'd say, okay. Uh, I see Ireland, uh, he's, he's, he's a little bit doing well now, um, especially on the international stage. I was just looking at his six the other day. He has um, 14 goals in 15 games for Germany. So, I think... I, oh, I, I actually didn't even know that. Yeah. 14 goals in 15 games and four assists. So I think he's, he's, he's someone for the future as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah. what song do you currently have on repeat on your playlist? Song, uh, Hold On, uh, Hold On to the Dream by, by Sean Paul. Okay. That's, oh. yeah. what, 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 what dream are you holding on to? Uh, just being successful in general. This semester has shown me things. I so that song just gets me through the day <laughs> okay. when things get really tough. Okay, that's interesting. So I remember when you were coming for training, when you were here in Zimbabwe, you'd always have a book with you. Mm -hmm. You'd always have a book. You'd either be reading a novel, you'd either be reading something, but you're always reading something. What are you currently reading now? <laughs> I am reading The Laws of Human Nature. Uh, I actually have it here. The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. And it's just about human behavior. Okay, interesting. I hope you're not, uh, you're not trying to read my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. <laughs> okay, so back to your experiences during your, during your recruitment. You got to play in the Ziva Division 2. Uh, I think that, that was in Mashonaland Division 2A. How was this experience for mm -hmm. you? Uh, and how did it help you prepare for college? Uh, I think it was probably an experience which I definitely needed. Uh, they, they, they trained with a lot of intensity and there was a lot of 
professionalism for the first few months of the season. And it's something I, I learned from those guys very well that uh, you know, no matter where you come from, no matter your background, uh, what really matters is what you put on the field. And I think that was a very good experience for me. As well as the, the physicality that they brought to my game, I was a bit, a little bit soft on my game. Yeah, you and uh, cheese boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those guys. Uh, Nasali never, never hesitated to step on you, Saga. No. It, was, it was a good, good experience. Yeah. And learning to to interact with guys I didn't know uh-huh. helped me when I got here. So I think it was a very good experience. So I think, as you rightly put it, uh, within the first. Uh, Within the first four months, the team was unbeaten. They were on top of the league. But then, mm-hmm. the bulk of that team ran away from training. Uh, they complained about the training being too, too rigid or a little bit too hard for them. What made you stay when even some of the experienced players were leaving training? Um, I just wanted to improve and uh, go as far as I could. And I knew that ahead of me was a journey which a lot of the things ahead of me I couldn't control. But what I could control was my, my physicality, my technicality, and my, my ability. So the only way I could control that was by practicing and going to the gym and, and running and going for practice. So I decided that was the best step forward for me. Okay, and then now you used to take the, the, the public transport, which is called the Combis Town, yeah? Every day from Chegu, <laughs> every day from Chegu to Norton. How can you say this either benefited you? I was, was that experience for you. You're coming from Falcon College. You've never, all the time you're having your dad drive you or you're either driving yourself. But now you're then forced mm-hmm. to, to come in a, in a combi, get two combis, and then get to training and be on time. How was this training? How was this experience mm-hmm. for you? Uh, it was a tough, tough experience. Um, but it's one I actually cherish. One, one of my few good memories uh, in that time of uncertainty because you, I met people who were actually experiencing life. Uh, you know, I take a truck, uh, a truck driver who's driven 18 hours, left his family behind, and talking to those people actually like helped me realize that uh, you know I, I'm a bit more privileged than I thought, and it's my duty actually to work as hard as I can to make something of myself. So it it was a tough experience because you know some days it would take me four or five hours between going to training and coming home, spend like two hours in, in the combi. And, but I think I, I, I enjoyed it. I'm a better person for it today. Yeah, I remember people, people can not believe in that this kid was actually from Falcon College. Uh, a lot of people would say, are you sure he's from Falcon College? They would ask that. So I think it was that humility that I'm going to from you as well. I think that was also very, very, motivating for a lot of people so thank you thank you yeah we, we appreciated that so what would you say you wish you knew before going to the states i would have to go back to patience uh-huh. uh, once i gave you before patience um when i first came i i tried to break into the team immediately and it, it caused a lot of frustration and uh, there was a lot of lack of motivation towards the end. And to an extent, I think that's where my injury came in because I was trying too hard to, to do the things I, I I didn't need to do some of those things. And eventually, um, I just ended up putting my body on the line too, too often and I, I got hurt. So patience of understanding that, you know, there's a process and you don't have to rush the process. You'll get to where you're supposed to get. Um, and that's what I wish I had known. I think that's a that's, that's a good um, a good life lesson. So this this brings me to the next question. 
Um, for the athletes who are still playing in the cheese group of schools, what advice would you give them? Mm-hmm. What advice would you give to the kids currently at Falcon, the kids currently at St. George's, St. John's? What advice would you give them? But some of them want to be where you are today. What advice would you give those guys? Uh, so to, my first piece of advice would be um, just be humble. Uh, a lot of us, Chiz, oh, Chiz are, uh, is a private school, for those of you who aren't familiar. Uh, we are private school kids, and uh, we've had a fairly comfortable life, not by any of our own doing, but, uh, you know, life just gave us good cards to an extent. And uh, we just have to be humble and put your head down and work and work to get what you want to get. Um, that's the first thing. But I think the second thing is learn to be independent from from mom and dad. Because uh, when you come here, mom and dad won't solve your problems for you all the time. Uh, you have to take some initiative. And just learn to do things for yourself. Okay. I think that that's, that's good advice, especially coming from a young man like you. That's, that's a lot of wisdom uh, uh, and a young man coming from you. So, mm, thank you. We talked about you changing schools, moving from, from the NC, uh, NIA, you're now at an NCA school. What would you say are the main differences between uh, being at Bertho in Tennessee and now being at an NIA, NCA Division One school? Um, there are way more people. <laughs> there are more people here. And in a way, it's more, it's more, that makes it a bit more competitive to, to try out for the teams. And it makes it makes the squad selection quite hard because they have a very limited amount of players they can have in their squads, and that it just makes things the restrictions make things a bit more tough for you to enter the team. Okay, I'm, I'm actually hoping you, you you get to make it as as, as a walk on uh, walk on athlete. I, I would like to see yes. I, would, I would like to see you play more. I would like to see you play Division One. That's the goal. That's the goal. So we talked about you learning lessons from from that move from uh, from Berto. Culture wise, mm-hmm. um, how's been the shift? You, you've you've gone from Zimbabwe, where our culture is different from from the culture and the people in the states. And then when you were in the states, you you, mm-hmm. you went to Tennessee, which predominantly a farmer's kind of kind of city and everything. And then you're now in a in an urban yes. setting. How has been that change in cultural differences? So the first, the first one from Zimbabwe to Tennessee, um, it was quite kind of unsettling because uh, Zimbabweans in general, I would say we're very conservative people. You know, you, you just stay to yourself, keep your, uh, be reserved. Um, then you go to a place where, you know, people are very open-minded and they just say what they think. And it's a very, it's almost like a, it was, it felt like a jungle. My first few weeks <laughs> there, like everything's just going and you don't know how to deal with it. Uh-huh. Um, but after that, after some time, uh, you just settle down and get your bearings and you realize, okay, this is what I'm here for. So let me focus on my, on what I'm here for. Um, the move from Tennessee to Illinois, uh, it's cold in Illinois. That's that's the biggest. That's the biggest. <laughs> yeah, the biggest uh, difference. But I think being in Tennessee helps me ground myself before this move here yeah, because I came here already knowing what I want to do and what I need to focus on doing. And so, you know, everything else is going on, but I'm, I I still remain focused on what I want to achieve. Okay, that's 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 very good. So, uh, what what advice would you give to Falcon College kids now? Um, you, you've talked to the generality of the cheese group of schools, private schools. What would you say to your old boys? Um, to Falcon College, don't let the legacy die. Number one, it's a very controversial thing, but I think the lessons that we learned at Falcon. 
uh, they seem very trivial at the time. You know, things like wake up early, make your bed, sweep your room, sweep, make sure your things are clean. Um, but when you come out here, sorry, excuse me, a lot of the things that we, we learn there are essential to you, to you being successful out here. You know, so I got here, I can wake up early. Um, I've never had disputes with any of my roommates in terms of cleanliness. Uh, you know, I, I get along with my professors and all that stuff. So a lot of the things you learn there and um, are things that come out when you, when you come out in the real world, you will actually use. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I hope uh, we do have a, a number of guys from, from Falcon actually listening to this. I think that's, that's good advice. So given the chance, given the chance, uh, what advice would you give to a 13 year old study you Um, thirteen year old me, I would tell myself that I'm not lost. I'm just early in the process. Um, there is a destination and I just need to be patient and, and, and work towards that and not uh, I feel like when I was younger, I, I rushed things because I was impatient and wanted to get there. But, and then when I was uh, unsuccessful, I, I, I thought I was a failure and that stuff. But um, I just realized that I'm, I wasn't lost. I was just beginning to find myself and, and my interests. So that is something I'll tell a 13 year old me. You're not lost, you're just early in the process. You're not lost. You're just early in the process. That's that's interesting. So what what are your current goals now? What are your current goals as a, as a student athlete? Um, what are your current goals as a person as studying? What are your goals? So as a student athlete, obviously my first goal is uh, get fit again, and uh, I'm planning to. I'd plan to walk on to the team this coming semester, but because of COVID, uh, the things that we can't control so i'm planning next semester try get fit walk onto the team and um yeah i'm i'm, I'm going to the gym i'm doing my cardio yeah. it's boring <laughs> but <laughs> mm -hmm. uh i've also started playing squash and i'm doing i'm playing different sports just to increase my, my athleticism i guess mm -hmm. um as as a person, um, my goals, I'd say to, to, to get serious with my, well, not serious, but to improve on my education and always look to improve on different things. So for instance, this year I, I decided to, to learn French and oh. uh, to start playing the guitar and to read the, I have a certain number of books I've, I've, I've listed. So learning as many skills as I can and finding a way to implement them into my life. So that, those are my current goals at the moment. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I think you, you have some pretty good goals. Uh, um, I like the reading part. I liked you focusing on your, on your athleticism as well. Um, I, I like generally how you have a plan now, you always focus. I think this is one of the things that also drew me to you as well. Um, I could see at your age, you were very much focused. You had a very, very good structure, um, very good build. You worked on your fiscality. You worked on, on, on a lot of things. And you did the mind to, to you. achieve. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm wishing you the best in that regard. I hope to see you achieve those things. Um, so I, I can also point you as a reference to, to other kids to say, you know what? Um, if you're looking for inspiration, look at this kid as well. So, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm looking at someone who's wanting to be a, uh, a prospective or who's a prospective student athlete, someone who wants to come to the States. What would you, <laughs> what would you have them know about that whole process? Uh, your grades matter more than you think. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, you have to make sure that your grades are above par always shoot for excellence in that department because you never know what happens in life so that would be my first my first um 
thing. Uh, I think secondly, uh, make sure you work with people who know what they're doing because it's a it's a long process. It's a tiring process, and uh, if you don't if you have a team that doesn't know what they're doing, then you're gonna be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily for me, I work with you guys, and uh, you guys you guys were very helpful with getting mm-hmm. myself <laughs> and a lot of the other athletes here. And I think I think we 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 need to, I should actually speak more about that because at the time when I when you guys found when you in particular found me, I was uh, on the brink of giving up this this journey. But uh, World Athletes Recruits, is, they know what they're doing. And uh, I think it's important to work with, with people who know what they're doing. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, I think for professional reasons, I won't say where I stole you from. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think that, was <laughs> that, that was literally a skill. I, I, I think we... It's safe to say we stole you from somewhere. But then, uh, as I said, when I looked at you, uh, when I looked at you, um, I saw how big you were. I saw how ready you were physically for for college soccer. And to me, the first thing was, why then should I have to make this kid wait when I know the person who's working with him is not going to take him anyway? So for me, looking at you, I was like, you know what? This person might not like me, but I think mm-hmm. for, for the future, this kid deserves a chance because he's obviously ready. Like, personally, I believe in having talent leave as early as possible. Uh, mm-hmm. There is no need for me to say if someone is 19, wait until next year or wait until the next two years. It, 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 affects, it, it affects a whole lot of things, especially for, for talented kids. Because time is very important. It is uh, time is of, of, of great essence in, in sport. If you are 19 and you have no plan of going anywhere, then the chances of you making it as a professional are very slim. True. True. So for me, I think when you look at an athlete, he's 18, he's ready, he has to leave. It's not like he wants to leave, he has to leave. I remember doing the same with... Uh, yeah. I remember doing the same, you, you recommended to go to us. When to get a case, yes, 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 yes. He, he still wanted to to play high school. But you could see from the way he was playing, he had outgrown high school. There was no need for yeah, him to stay yeah, there anymore. Good. There was no need for him to stay there anymore. So it's, 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 mm-hmm. it's basically what I believe in. I believe if you're a parent, I believe if you're a guardian, when your kid has a talent, let them leave as early as possible. I know it's hard to let go of, of, it's, it's literally hard for any parents to say, you know what, uh, my kid is going some 18,000 kilometers away from home. Let me just let them go. It, it's a hard decision, to make, but I think it's a necessary decision that people have to make that decision. So speaking about guardians. And I think in, in addition, oh, sorry. No, no it's okay. You can, you I was can saying in on. addition to that, uh, your, your decision to send Taurai to Gwete, it's, it's paid off and it's, it's a testimony because he's doing very well this side now. Uh-huh. And uh, you have a lot of schools looking at him. And if he had waited, you know, you never know what happens in two years or in a, in a year. So uh, that's very true. It's very true. Yeah, t- t- time, time is, is, is of great essence. You, can, you cannot wait up until you're 21 to leave for college. Uh, unfortunately, even our education system is, is, is in such a way where I think it leaves it leaves it a little bit too late for us to make to try and figure out life. If 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 you're going to yeah. go to university in Zimbabwe, you're going to graduate when you're 23, 24. In other in another part of the world, a 23, 24 year old is pretty much figuring it out as a professional already, whether as a professional soccer player, mm-hmm. whether as an accountant, whether as a, as a banker, but they get to go to college mm-hmm. in the area. Uh, yeah, yeah, true. true. Yeah, so I, I remember, my, I remember my first year coming to the states, and people asking me, "What were you doing?" But I got <laughs> there when I was twenty. Yes. Yes, I got there when I was twenty. Yes, and then people actually thought I was sitting at home, but then I was just done with my A levels. So mm-hmm. I think that time 
to me, especially if you have a professional gym, leave. If you're 17, you've reached your AS level, you have passed your AS level, they are acceptable in the States, the embassy will accept those results if you pass. So leave. Go to the next stage. And then the, obviously the soccer in the United States is better than the soccer back here in Zimbabwe. So if you're trying to go professional, if there's anyone who's listening right now, if you're trying to go professional, if your dream is to be a professional soccer player, if your dream is to go into college and play college, NCA Division One, NCA Division Two, or at a high level, try to leave early, as early as possible. Go to the state, go, go fight for your place when you're still young. So I was saying now, speaking about guardians, um, we're going to talk about your dad. Um, you, you're obviously close with your dad. But with the status that your dad has in society, how do you do? How do you deal with that pressure of wanting not only to be like him but also surpass him? How do you deal with that? Uh, that's a tough question. I I think being at home when I was still at home, I kind of lived under his shadow, and I I. I think it was a good thing for me to leave when I did because now I get to be my own man, figure out my own journey and um, build my own empire in, in a way. When I was back home, if any, if I needed anything, I was always, ah, dad, can I, dad, can I do this? Can I get this? Or, ah, that's Dr. Mingasan there, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Now I can make my own decisions in a way and um, get to be my own man and figure out my own journey. Just, I think it's good. That's interesting. So I think there is an issue where a lot of people don't talk about depression. A lot of people don't talk about your laws in life. Uh, so I, I remember a month ago, people were talking about depression in sports, depression in, uh, as, as, a, as a sports figure, depression as, as a student athlete. What would you say are some of the challenges that you face as a, as a student athlete in the United States? Uh, you don't have enough time. <laughs> 24 hours is not enough time for you to, to do what you need to do. Because okay. uh, you wake up at 5, 5.30, you go for training, you go back to class, you go to training again, get home, you need to do homework and sleep, get enough sleep. And you don't have enough time to like socialize with other people. And um, I would say it's a very demanding schedule. And a lot of, I know a lot of people who are student athletes who genuinely don't like it because it, it is so demanding and it's something that people don't talk about here is like there's a lot of drug use with athletes like uh, alcohol because it's you just want a release from that life and yeah it's, it's, it's a tough one sometimes if you don't manage your time well yeah, it's true so how do you guys manage how do you guys manage being a student athlete and also being a student how do you balance your time how do you manage your time how do, how, how do you cope with all that? Uh, in in my case, uh, I think I, I already got to the U.S. prepared in that respect, in, in respect of the athleticism part of it. I was very fit, very well built. And it just helped me with in terms of when we were at training, I wouldn't fatigue as easily. Um when I got to class, I would be still fresh in my mind, as well as I worked pretty hard in class. So um, grades didn't really affect me too much because I was always getting good grades. Um, so time management and always just being prepared before you get into it. I think that's what really helped me. Uh, if I hadn't left prepared for, for what I was coming into, I don't think I would have survived. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, so I would like to thank you. Uh, I would also like to thank the guys who joined uh, joined the live, uh, the likes of Kevin, the likes of Jerome. I also saw Manungo, and, and I saw a number of guys who joined the live. Um, I, I would like to thank you guys for joining the live. I would like to thank you for being a part of this recruitment journey series. 
Um, our main aim is to inspire athletes to take their education seriously and also realize the opportunities that education can open for you as, as, a, uh, as an athlete. We know a lot of people who just want to play soccer, but then education can be a very, very good plan B should anything happen during your career. And then it can also be a very, very good plan A when you graduate uh, from college or when you're done with your career as a professional soccer player. We know uh, in the real world, a 35-year-old person is considered a youth. But now when you speak of Cristiano Ronaldo, at 35, we are saying he's old in soccer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the importance of you having something to fall back on soon after your career. But at 35, you can still be very much productive elsewhere. Yeah. The education opens up opportunities for you as an athlete, not just on the field of play, but also off the field of play. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have educated athletes, uh, guys like Van der Sar, who's currently now the president of Ajax in, uh, in Ireland. Uh, mm -hmm. So as, it's also our vision as World Athletes Recruit to have a, lot of, a little bit more people who come back to Zimbabwe and actually help, or, and, and also in general, help Africa as a whole with the knowledge that they get from, 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 from these experiences. We understand not everyone is going to be a professional soccer player, but we also understand the value of the education that they're going to get in the United States. And hopefully, I think it's going to be very excited when you get uh, someone who's doing IT in, in the United States, comes back, creates an app that can change the face of African soccer. Um, you, or uh, someone who studies sports management, who comes back and, and, and changes the management structures of how we manage our game, actually get it to be more competitive and a little bit more commercial. So that's the main point of recruitment journeys. We, we, we get to converse with you guys. We are very much happy that you guys take the time to talk with us. And this also inspires other kids to say, you know what? I saw this interview with Tadio Aminga in the United States, he's in and I, and I want to be like him. We, we, we are hoping from people from different backgrounds can also copy that. So I would like to thank you for taking the time to, to talk with us, for taking the time. Um, do you, do you very much. Do you have anything you'd want to say? Yes, uh, I just wanted to uh, make an appreciation post to you, to you and to World Athletes Recruits. Um, the work you do is not easy. I don't think a lot of people understand the things that go on behind the scenes. And uh, I think for you, the way you do it in such a professional manner um, and still have time to do things like this to inspire more people. I think it's very important. And uh, people listening at home, I or anywhere else, uh, I think just just keep working hard, be humble, and don't 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 give up. Just be patient with things. And things will end up where they need to be. Okay. Thank you, Tadi. So thank you, guys. Uh, thank this you. is uh, this is the end of our interview. We are very very much grateful for you to, for. You guys, you, take, you took the opportunity to use your data. You took the opportunity to use your time to listen to us. Um, thank you and uh, goodbye. Thank you, Coach. Goodbye. Goodbye.